A vital part of a plant is its leaves, and here we're going to look at a leaf in more detail. To begin with, we're cutting away part of this leaf to prepare it for a special type of microscope. We're freezing our leaf at a temperature far colder than anywhere we get on Earth, to approximately minus 200 degrees Celsius. This is as we'll be using an electron microscope, and we must freeze biological samples to maintain their shape and features. Here we've transferred our frozen leaf into an area where we can prepare what is called a cross-section. What we're doing is cutting through the frozen leaf with a sharp blade to expose the inner part of the leaf. This is then moved into the electron microscope. In this instance, we're using a scanning electron microscope. We're using this as we can get higher magnification images than are possible with a light microscope. We'll then be able to look inside our leaf at the cells and get greater details than far beyond anything that we can see with our eyes. Here we can see that the thickness of the plant leaf is approximately 300 micrometers, which is three one thousandths of a meter. As we increase in magnification, we can see the cells inside the leaf, and these are much smaller. These are about 50 micrometers long, which means that in length they are smaller than the average width of a human hair. With a scanning electron microscope, we can continue to increase the magnification, change our settings to record nice images, and even in this case, cause changes to the sample so we can get an even closer look. Here we've used charged atoms to dig into the sample so that we can look inside in even more detail. Now we aren't limited to looking at leaves or cells. We can use a scanning electron microscope for many different samples to try and help to solve interesting questions and challenges. We can even look to compare the images we collect with those from a light microscope, and perhaps even those from an even higher resolution imaging technique, such as a transmission electron microscope. Overall, through using electron microscopes, we're able to image a range of interesting samples.